Maybe your mayhem is about to arrive and you're looking for some basic PvP builds in the Elder Scrolls Online. Great, this video is for you. Welcome back gang, it's Deltia from DeltiasGaming.com. Today's video I will share two basic builds for stamina and magicka characters that are non-class specific. Meaning, you can pick them up and they will work on any class and I'll list some suggested skills, gear choices, champion points, consumables, and more. You can customize these builds as you see fit, but they're a great starting point for anyone looking to get started in PvP and Elder Scrolls Online. Mid-Year Mayhem is right around the corner and it's going to be a blast. Pick these builds up, customize them as you see fit, and thanks for watching. So first up, we're going to cover uh, magic builds. Timestamps are below if you wish to skip ahead to certain sections and or stamina. So I'm going to list specific skills and class specific skills you can swap in and out for magic based builds. Keep in mind, some classes have stronger spammables, dots, buffs, and so on. So it's going to be up to you to flex things in and out. But this is a general premise and a good starting point the first skill on our bar i usually have a mobility stun or a buff so um class specific ones dragon knight has fossilized great stun necromancer bone totem nightblade has dark cloak sorcerer has streak templar has toppling charge and wardens have deep fissure so bar one we're going to use either lightning staff if we want heavy aoe or fire staff if we want heavy single target and our first ability it's important that we have something that's mobile or we stun or we have a buff so for Dragon Knights, I go with Fossilize, Necromancer, Bone Totem, Nightblade, Dark Cloak, Sorcerer, Streak, and Templar, Toppling Charge, Warden with the Deep Fissure. The second ability up is going to be Degeneration. This is going to give you a little bit damage over time, but it's going to give you major sorcery, increasing your damage. Flex this out if your class has something better, like more specific, like the Netch for the Warden or Crit Surge for the Sorcerer. Next up is going to be Elemental Drain. This is going to armor debuff, so it's going to strip armor. It's very useful for solo. It's going to be a resource sustaining tool, and it's going to increase up your damage. So swap this out. If you have a damage over time or a burst ability, like something like the Sorcerer's Daedric Curse, but Elemental Drain is a great ability if you don't know what to put on your bar. Force Pulse is going to be next, and that's a main spammable. So swap this out if your class has something else better, like Swallow Souls for the Nightblade, Lava Whip for the Dragon Knight, and of course, Puncturing Sweeps for the Templar. But in this spot, you got to have some type of main spamble, whether it's single target or AoE. Last active skill on our bar is what I usually have as an execute or a buff. So if a, a player gets around 25% health or lower, what's an ability I can spam? Or if your class doesn't have something specific, what's another damage over time effect that's going to be really good? For Dragon Knights, I go as Engulfing Flames, Necromancer, Stalking Bone, Blast Bones, Nightblade, Impale, Sorcerer, Mage's Wrath, Templar, Radiant Oppression, and Warden, Birds of Prey. Shooting Star is our ultimate of choice. So this is ranged A and it's a nice bursting tool but there is tons of options here you can always go with uh, destruction staff eye of the storm if you like that big massive aoe to jump in huge keep fights and ball groups but shooting star is a good choice all around and what i stick with mac bar we're going to have a restoration staff and this is primarily used for protection survivability and buffs first slot up is going to be an armor buff and what i highly recommend you have to have dragonite spiked armor necromancer bone armor nightblade gets their armor buff via the shadow barrier passive and i put mass hysteria back here on this bar sorcerer lightning form templar our rune focus warden frost globe next ability up on our bar we're gonna have some flexibility you can have a buff a heal or something else that you find useful for your class so dragon knight i would go with carterize necromancer spirit guardian nightblade siphoning attacks sorcerer dark conversion templar extended ritual and warden arctic blast then the foundation of all my pvp builds center around the next skill race against time you need to have something for mobility because you're going to be immobilized snared and if you don't find a way to get out of it you will die this is the sigic order skill line kind of a pain to get a hold of but it's an absolute must and you can swap this out for something like misform uh, with vampire and some class specific things have this uh, ability to get rid of immobilizations but if you don't have one 
you got to try race against time because you do not want to get locked in on one place if you do you're dead in pvp next ability up is a heal over time radiant re radiating regeneration so this is a decent heal over time but also it's going to affect allies as well so it has some group utility with it the other more speeds up the healing but has no group utility and then last up is combat prayer this is a decent burst heal it's going to affect you and your allies give you minor berserk but you're going to swap this out for a lot of different things like templar breath of life or honor the dead or whatever your class focuses on so some classes use light armor with a lot of max stats and might use shields for survivability but if you don't know what combat prayer from the restoration staff is a good place to start and then life giver is our ultimate if we don't know where to go life giver will get you through a lot it's insanely powerful both for you and group play so solo and group this is going to be a must-have very low cost easy to get this up you hit it you're not going to be going down very easily or someone in your group is going to be very survivable so general tips on damage basically you're going to buff make sure your buffs are running at all times specifically your major sorcery you're going to use elemental drain to debuff the target lowering the resistances essentially increasing your damage you're going to apply whatever damage over time effects you have uh, chosen and then you're going to go to your spammable around your execute 25 percent or health uh, or less then you're going to swap your spammable to your execute ability and you're going to want to stun targets on cooldown so when that little circle around their feet is no longer there use some class specific or otherwise stun keep them stunned lock down and burst them down it'll be much easier survivability very simple but the two things you got to do is maintain your armor buff your heal over time you maintain both of those you're going to be much much more survivable than letting them drop off constantly and then use race against time to speed away line of sight hide behind those rocks hide behind those pillars that's what's going to save your life use combat prayer when you need to spam a big burst heal or whatever your class specific one is hit it over and over if you have to or a restoration staff ultimate you should be able to survive pretty easily now the gear choices so very simple here i go with a lot of heavy on my magic builds and i go with the engine guardian two-piece monster helm because i'm not wearing a ton of light armor I'm going to go with this setup because I want to be very survivable first. You can always take the training wheels off later and ramp up the damage. This setup is going to have a big max stat pool. So if you need to dodge roll, block, sprint, you're getting stunned a lot. Great. You'll have tons of stamina. You need a lot of health to survive because you can't react as fast. Great. This is a good setup. So engine guardian, dark shave caverns too. It's going to give you that resource sustains you and it comes in a two piece. Mark of Pariah. This is overland Rothgar. What it's going to do is ramp up your resistances to lower your health gets. So if you're not good at breaking free, you're taking a lot of pressure. It's going to ramp up your toughness. Perfect set. Next up is shackle breaker, craftable six trait, Bardenfall, Morrowind. What it does is give you a little bit of recovery, but a bunch of max stats, max magic and stamina. The stamina component is very useful if you're dodge rolling, breaking free, blocking, and it's very forgiving. However, you're going to swap this out when you want more damage or a little bit more flexibility. What I would swap it out for is Heartland's Conqueror. This is a craftable seven trait Blackwood, also will tradable players. What it's going to do is increase your effectiveness of your weapon trait. So if you have sharpened on the front, it's going to double that effect. And if you have defending or powered on the back, it's going to double that effect. So one five piece can be very, very good offensive or defensive. Another good set is Ancient Dragon Guard. This is craftable six trait Southern Elsewhere, and it's also tradable with players. It's going to add weapon and spell damage, but it's going to flip over and add even more resistances when you're below 50% health. So it's going to turn off the uh, weapon and spell damage. It's going to turn on more resistances. You combine this with pariahs, it's going to be very, very strong. Okay, I'll touch on champion points um, later because those are pretty much the same that I use. But other miscellaneous things for magic. Race. I go with the Altmer all around. I think my favorite. Um, and then Dark uh, Elf or Dunmer is all around really good. If you want to switch between magic and stam and then third choice is argonian very very tanky but lacks a lot of damage consumables i'll go with clockwork citrus and i carry on tripods movable potions spell detect mundestone overall i think the apprentice is the best because it affects your healing and damage done 
though I run Atronach if I need more sustain. Attributes. The number one thing is you want to reach 29,000 health or more in the PvP context that you're doing, Cyrodiil Battlegrounds. Once you reach 29,000 health, you're going to want 15,000 stamina. That way you can break free, dodge, and not get stunned once and die. Then the rest you're going to put into magic. With the setup that I'm running here, the champion points that I have, I'm at 64 magic, but 29k health, 15k stam, rest into magic. Okay, let's switch gears and talk about the stam build next. So stamina skills, um, you can go with the, the 2H sword and board is my favorite loadout for generalized play. Again, flex things in and out depending on what your class does well or doesn't. So two-handed is very good for offense. And just a very simple bar setup is Stampede. This is a gap closer, hits very hard, and has a decent damage over time when it strikes. Rally is another ability that's going to buff your weapon damage and it's going to recast for a burst heal. Though, some classes have a very useful weapon damage buff so you can swap this in and out. It's like the, the Sorcerer's Crit Surge or the Warden's Niche. This third ability is a flex spot. This is for something class specific. So a stun, a buff, a damage over time effect. With Dragon Knights, I go with Fiery Breath, Necromancer, Blighted Blast Bones, Nightblade, Mass Hysteria, Sorcerer Streak, Templar Repentance, and Warden Subterranean Assault. Now, my mortal enemy, but something effective, is Dizzying Swing. It's a simple single target spam wall that you can use if you don't know what to use for your class specific. You can swap something out for like a damage over time effect, or if you're a Templar biting jabs, it's a common sense replacement. What you're gonna wanna do with this is kinda medium weave an attack in between so you can stun the target. Quite useful, but it's annoying. Next ability up is Executioner. Single target execute that ramps up in damage the lower the player's health gets. I swap this out for Camouflage Hunter if I'm getting annoyed by the stealth players or if I just want something a bit simpler I don't want to have to fuss with the execute. Next up is Dawnbreaker or Smiting. This is an insane AoE damage conal. Great passive for slotting it and it's an on-demand stun. Though something like a Dragonite is going to favor Take Flight or a Nightblade with Incapacitating Strikes. If you don't know what to put, DB is the best. Back bar is going to be sword and shield. This is defensive buffs and heals. So you're going to go with an armor buff on your number one slot. Your primary thing you want to maintain. Dragonite, spike armor, necromancer, bone armor. Nightblade gets their armor buff through mass hysteria via the shadow barrier passive. Sorcerer, hurricane, templar, rune focus, warden, frost cloak. Next up is going to be a stun, a buff, or a heal from your class. So Dragonite, go with Carterize. Necromancer, I go with mortal coil. Nightblade, I go with Dark Cloak. Sorcerer, I go with Crit Surge. Templar, I go with Extended Ritual. And Warden, Arctic Blast. Now, Shuffle. Again, the three key on this build, you gotta have mobility. And I think the most important buff for Sam builds, Major Evasion, reducing AoE damage. So this is gonna give you both things in once. Shuffle from the Medium Armor skill and why we use five Medium Armor. It's a mobility tool. It's gonna remove immobilizations, keep you mobile, keep you snared, and reduce that AoE. You gotta keep the Armor buff and Shuffle up if you do those two things you'll be pretty survivable next up is reverberating bash this is an on-demand stun using the sword and shield bar so you can swap this out if your class has a better stun like the dragonite has fossilized or the sorcerer has streaked those can't be blocked or avoided like this can but if you don't know this is a very very good one that you can slot but flex this in and out we're using sword and shield primarily for the ultimate not for this ability next up is a, just a simple heal burst heal over time and that's resolving vigor alliance war skill line and it's a must and a staple in stand build so if you have rally and resolving vigor regardless you have a lot of survivability and then next is the, the sword and shield the reason we're using it for spell wall it's a great ultimate when lacking a class specific defensive alt however it's selfish meaning it only affects you it only benefits you so swap this out if you want something more group play like uh, the warden with trees so very simple damage you're gonna buff with rally shuffle charge in with stampede and then medium weave dizzying swing Dawnbreaker execute. It's kind of annoying to get hit by this, but you can understand why so many players do it because it's effective. Survival, the main thing here is to keep up your armor buff, shuffle, and vigor. And when taking pressure, using your class stun or reverberating bash, constantly stun and pressure the target with that. And you should be all right. 
So gear is next, and it's the exact same loaded as my magic build, except I swap out some glyphs, some traits, and a couple pieces of armor. So the one piece of armor I swap in is blood spawn. This is obtained in veteran spin of clutch too. So the one piece is going to give you stamina recover. That's great, but it's going to give you, uh, it's going to proc a percentage chance to give you ultimate and more resistances. This is very good if we're taking a lot of pressure because we are in medium armor. We have the major evasion buff. It's going to lower the AOE damage, but that extra resistance and ultimate can be very beneficial. If you want some more burst damage, swap in something like Balrogs for high burst damage. But if you don't know what, picking up good old Bud Spawn is a great place to start. Mark of Pariah, just in case you skip the magic portion, it's an Overland Rothgar and it's tradable in, on the guilds. It's very forgiving. So the lower health you get, the higher resistances you get. So if you struggle with breaking free or taking pressure, this is a must have staple gear set. Next up is Shackle Breaker. It's gonna give you a large pool of stats. A lot of builds like the Stamina Nightblade use a ton of magic anyway. So it's very good because of that large stat pool, but you don't necessarily need that and you can take it off, take the training wheels off and ramp up more damage if you want. Heartland Conqueror, this is a craftable seven trait in Blackwood. What it do is, does is increase your effectiveness of weapon traits by 100%. So if you have Sharpen on the front bar and you have Defending or Power on the bar, back bar, what it's gonna do is ramp up the effectiveness, making both your offensive and defensive weapons really, really good and useful. So you don't have to swap in a bunch of uh, different gear setups and have something super complex, very simple, very easy and it's craftable. Ancient Dragon Guard is another craftable six trait Southern Elsewhere, also tradable with players. What that's gonna do, give you weapon and spell damage, but below 50% health, it's gonna turn off that weapon and spell damage and flip to more resistances. You pair this with Pariahs and uh, Blood Spawn, you're gonna have a ton of resistances. And I'd recommend this if you're one of those players that gets flustered easy, you take a lot of pressure, you don't know what to do, what to click, it'll make it a little bit more forgiving for you. So for the stamina racial choices, Orc I think is well balanced, stamina race, all around great for PvP. Number two, I'd go with Khajiit. Insane burst damage and good all around uh, stats and sustain. Number three is Imperial because it has a ton of max stats, but also has reduced costs, including ultimates. Consumables, I go with Artanium, uh, Takeaway Broth, uh, Potions, I do weapon damage and crit. I bring some Tripod, I bring some Detect Potions as well. And also I bring some uh, movable speed ones just in case. Munda Stone Warrior all around is the best because it's going to increase your weapon damage. It's going to affect your healing and damage done. Attributes, I'm going to go at least 29k health with my gear on inside the PvP context that I'm doing. Uh, Cyrodiil campaign or battlegrounds. Once that's done, I'm going to put the rest into stamina. I usually like to have at least 12,000 max magicka. Might be a little bit higher if I'm running something like a night blade that uses a lot of cloak. Now let's talk about the champion points. So magic and stamina builds are very similar. I go with survivability more so than damage, but change it out as you see fit. So the fitness tree, the red tree, the three that I constantly go with is boundless vitality, slippery, and rejuvenation. These three are a must have. Then I pick one, depending if I'm playing magic or stamina. Magicka, I go with the juggernaut. While immune to crowd control effects, you take 2% less damage. This is really helpful when you're getting bursted down by Dawnbreaker and Soul Tether. If you break free of a CC quickly, you'll have massive reduction in damage, allowing you to bounce back from that Dawnbreaker or Soul Tether. Stamina, I go with Expert Evasion. Your next dodge roll is free of cost. So it's gonna have a cooldown with it, but this is your primary means of surviving is constantly dodge rolling and being mobile. So it makes a lot of sense not lowering your stamina, giving you a little bit of flexibility with the dodge rolls. Then the Warfare, I go with the exact same four, regardless if I'm playing Magic or Stamina. Unassailable, reducing your damage taken by AoEs. Untame Aggression, increasing your weapon and spell damage. Duelist, reducing your damage taken by single target. Master of Arms, increasing your damage with direct damage. So this is gonna be all around good for survivability and a little bit of damage. You could always ramp up a lot more damage, but the reduction in AoE and single target damage with unassailable and duelist will dramatically increase your survivability. Trust me. And then craft the green tree really doesn't do anything combat wise, but treasure hunter, rationer, liquid efficiency, and steeds blessing.
And those are some general um, builds that you can use and swap things in and out as you see fit. But the gear setup and the skills are very simple. Make it simpler, not more complex. Put the training wheels on when you're starting and then take them off for more damage, more um, healing, more this, more that when you see fit. But it's a good place to start. I've been playing it and this footage that I've been showing you is me using these exact same builds. So hopefully you'll get something out of this. You can jump into PvP, not get killed instantly and be frustrated and quit because I want more people to enjoy PvP just like I do. Thanks so much for watching and shout out to my Patreons for sponsoring this video. And if you would like to be featured in end credits of future videos, link in the description below.